afraid. Police said they are still searching for the shooter and are urging people in the area to shelter in place. One witness said the shooter was on the roof of a business. The witness said he was only 10 feet from where the shooting happened. Police and ambulances from several jurisdictions swarmed the area with several officers carrying rifles. Several children took shelter in the basement of a nearby business after the shooting. We will have an update on the investigation tonight on News 18 at 11. And another police incident is making headlines across the country. The city of Akron, Ohio, has issued a curfew for the downtown part of the city. It comes in the wake of protests following the release of video showing the police killing of a 25-year-old black man. Elise Preston has the latest from Akron. Newly released police body camera footage shows the critical moments leading up to the death of Jalen Walker. The reason for stop is traffic violation. Police say they were attempting to stop Walker for a traffic and equipment violation, which was not seen on camera. Seconds later, the officer reports a gunshot fired from Walker's car. That vehicle just had a shot come out of its door. It went from being a routine traffic stop to now a public safety issue. Video shows Walker then leading police on a chase before he eventually jumps out of the passenger side wearing a ski mask. Officers tried to deploy a taser while chasing him on foot, but are unsuccessful. Moments later, eight officers unleash dozens of rounds. Officers say they tried to render aid, but Walker, who was unarmed at the time of the shooting, died at the scene. Police say a handgun and a magazine were found in Walker's car, and that body camera images show Walker appearing to reach for his waist area right before he was killed. But he did not fire at police during the foot pursuit. A preliminary medical report says Walker had more than 60 gunshot wounds. They need to be able to articulate what specific threats they were facing, and that goes for every round that goes down the barrel of their gun. It was absolutely excessive. The law requires to use force that is reasonable. Protests continued late Sunday where demonstrators say police used tear gas to disperse the crowd. Akron police have not confirmed those reports. Walker's family is calling for calm. In a statement, they said Jalen would have wanted us to channel our anger into peaceful, thoughtful action that can bring long term change and reform. It does help with all of the transparency, with the early releases, but the transparency does not, um, does not camouflage the pain of what happened. The eight officers involved have been placed on paid administrative leave pending an independent state investigation. Meanwhile, the union representing those officers says it believes the investigation will show that the officers' actions were justified, including the number of shots fired. Elise Preston, CBS News, Akron, Ohio. Now on to the weather for this 4th of July. There's certainly a lot going on tonight, and we're going to send it over to Storm Team 18 Chief Meteorologist Chad yeah. Evans, who has the updated planner for tonight. Chad, it's been beautiful so far today. Yeah, yeah, just a really hot one out there. At least we've had a breeze. The humidity mostly held in check with our two fastest to the weather story. One's the heat. The heat advisory up for the entire viewing area and over a massive chunk of the Midwest Corn Belt. Down into the south, at excessive heat warning down towards St. Louis. And some of our heat indices, especially tomorrow into uh, Wednesday, will be right in that excessive heat warning criteria. So no matter which way you slice it, whatever you're under, this is some pretty dangerous heat coming right back in. There's the official heat advisory from the Weather Service. Here it goes until uh, 10 or 9 Eastern time for Tippecanoe, New Carroll and southward. And it's the same timing for the rest of the viewing area as well. Temperatures are running mostly in the 90s, but it's a little cooler in our northwest. The heat indices running in the 90s to near 100 degrees as it gets a little more humid. So that's story one. Story two, this small severe thunderstorm watch that does cover Newton, Jasper and Benton counties. This is something we were talking about last week. This cluster of storms coming out of northern Illinois this evening and right there it is. You can see it kind of moving east, slightly southeast. Now the thing is, this will tend to move into increased capping or dry warm lid over the area this evening. So as it approaches, it will gradually weaken, but there's still a risk of a severe gust out of this in parts of Newton and Jasper counties right through about six or seven o'clock. We'll talk more next. Thanks, Chad.
The annual Lafayette Stars and Stripes celebration got kicked off in style this morning. Floats, classic cars and queens by the dozens were on hand for this morning's parade. The parade began near Five Points and made its way down Main Street and ended the festivities in Columbian Park. Greater Lafayette Fire and Police led the pack with lights and sirens blaring. Dozens of local organizations marched and sang and tossed out candy and toys for kids. And no parade is complete without the Tippecanoe Shriners Club Tippy Tees Carts. City Clerk Cindy Murray says some last-minute preparation made this year's parade a success. I was concerned about the entries from there for a while. I, they weren't coming in as fast as I wanted them to, but towards the end, everybody rallied and we were able to get enough to have a, a decent sized parade. I uh, came out to uh, support the Central Catholic Knights. They're in the parade today with uh, winning the state championship. So I'm um, out to uh, celebrate with the boys and celebrate the 4th of July. The Central Catholic Knights beat the Tecumseh Braves to win state this year. They were treated to a fire engine ride in today's parade. The Stars and Stripes concert begins at 6 this evening with fireworks kicking off around 10. And the West Lafayette Golf and Country Club is making preparations for their Independence Day fireworks display today. The show is open to the public and tickets are still available. Today's show will feature a picnic, face painting, kids games and more. A unique part of today's show is the parachute jumpers. This is their sixth year of the parachute jump. All skydivers are military veterans. Owner Tom Day says preparations for the summertime show begin as early as winter. Oh, we start uh, the preparations in January and February, getting all the equipment lined up and the, the uh, show and the skydivers, and it just takes a tremendous amount of work by a lot of good people. The picnic buffet is from 5 to 8 p.m. Kids games will take place from 7 to 9 p.m. The first parachute jump will be at 8.15 and the second at 9.55. The gates will close at 9.30 for safety reasons. If you'd like to purchase tickets, go on over to WLFI.com. And here's a look at some of the 4th of July fireworks happening in the viewing area. In Tippecanoe County, you can head down to Reilly Plaza in Lafayette. Fireworks are scheduled to begin at 10 p.m. tonight. In White County, Indiana Beach will start its fireworks at 11 p.m. In Benton County, Fowler Town Park will start its show at dusk. In Carroll County, Delphi fireworks begin at dark and fireworks begin at 10 p.m. in Flora. Now, News 18 has confirmed with Benton County Dispatch that a house fire happened late Sunday night. Tankers were requested to the scene around 9.15 p.m. Sunday evening. The Benton County EMS director has confirmed five township fire departments responded to the call. The Boswell Town Marshal, Benton County Sheriff's Department, and EMS also responded. No other information is available at this time. News 18 will continue to share updates as they become available. And the Lafayette Police Department is investigating a shooting that occurred before 9 p.m. Saturday night at Columbian Park. Multiple rounds were fired near the park. There were no reported injuries. Officers with the Lafayette Police Department arrested Heath G. Fletcher of Lafayette in relation to the shooting. He is charged with criminal recklessness with a deadly weapon, unlawful carrying of a handgun, and intimidation with a deadly weapon. Police say this appears to have been a targeted shooting and there is no active threat to the community. The department will be increasing its patrol around Columbian Park, and anyone with information regarding the case is asked to contact the Lafayette Police Department at 765-807-1200 or the WeTip hotline at 800-78-CRIME. Now, with the 4th of July holiday upon us, the American Red Cross is reminding people about the importance of donating blood over the holiday. The Red Cross says it typically sees about a 21% decrease in donations around most holidays throughout the year, including July 4th. While the supply of blood drops, officials note the demand for it does not. The Red Cross says many regular donors either forgot to donate prior to going on holiday trips or don't think they have enough time to fit it into their schedules before leaving. Red Cross of Indiana Communications Director Lamar Holliday says it's important for people to remember donating blood only takes one hour and can save up to three lives per donation. Patients who still need that blood, there's still that need. Um, and so when we look at cancer patients, when we look at um, those who are suffering from chronic illnesses, um, they are still in need of that blood. So we normally take this time to, to remind donors um, you know, before you take that vacation, add us to your to-do list. Holiday says people can donate by signing up on the Red Cross website, calling their local Red Cross, or by using the Red Claw Cross blood donation app. And coming up next, falling gas prices around the greater Lafayette region. We have your gas price tracker right after the break.
Okay. I tossed a break. Okay. Ten. Watching News 18 at 5. News from where you live. Welcome back. News 18 is helping you out by tracking down the lowest gas prices on both sides of the river. And good news, prices continue to drop. In Lafayette, the Arco on Veterans has a gas for $4.50 a gallon. In West Lafayette, the Circle K on Northwestern has gas for $4.75 a gallon. Remember, these prices can change at any second. To keep a close eye on gas in the area, head on over to WLFI.com. And now, your Storm Team 18 forecast. Weather from where you live. All right, I got the severe thunderstorm watch highlighted here on our graphic. You can see it in white here. The watch goes until 8 p.m. Eastern time. It covers Newton, Jasper, Benton counties. And you can see that orange polygon. That's a severe thunderstorm warning just off to the northwest of Hoopston. And we look closer here. There is that cluster of severe storms. It's had a history of wind damage associated with it. Now, here's the thing. You look at this and you say, oh boy, we're going to get it this evening. It's going to go right through the heart of the area. Here's the thing. The cap or the warm dry lid is strengthening over the area. So what that will do as this storm tries to come into the viewing area, it will essentially begin to collapse. However, it may hang on just long enough to bring a little severe weather risk to Western Benton, maybe Southwest uh, Newton County, right in the zone. That's why a, a piece of that watch is up for our far Northwestern fringe. And we will still get a few of these showers in parts of the area, especially the Northern half of the area this evening, and perhaps a little thunder before even these begin to collapse and dry up as well. But you can see right here, kind of moving in this direction, Again, as it moves our way, it will tend to weaken and collapse with time, but still count on a little thunder and some showers for part of the area really from now right through 9 p.m. And also note how the severe part may skim by the far northwest fringe of the viewing area. And there are the times of arrival here. You can see moving up towards Remington here in about 12 minutes. Fowler, it's about 45 minutes before some showers and thunder come in. And then more like about 46 minutes at Monticello. Otherwise, it's just a warm, increasingly humid evening. Again, northwest, northern county, some showers, a little thunder. And that one storm here, eight right up to about nine o'clock. And then it's just humid. Temperatures running in the 80s, the heat indices running in the 90s. Headed for overnight lows, very warm. We're only going to drop down to 72 to 80 with a south wind blowing. And then late tonight, early tomorrow morning, some storms will likely clip our far northern and far northeastern counties that I will show you on future cast here in just a second. But in the meantime, there is your Storm Prediction Center outlook. Again, now to about 9 for the far northwest fringe and then from 3 to 7 a.m. potentially of a severe storm or two up towards our far northeastern counties and the threat would be wind and tomorrow Wednesday Thursday any storm that can develop in the area given how hot and unstable it is would pose a wind threat so that'll be something to keep in mind over the next few days tomorrow 93 to 100 for high temperatures blistering heat Again, storms north northeast in the morning and then towards the afternoon evening. Watch for some storms possible. 97 Lafayette, 100 Fowler, 100 at Morocco, 95 Kokomo. Look at those heat indices. That's why we've got the heat alerts up. Look at that as the humidity increases tomorrow and still very hot in midweek. Watch for some storms on Wednesday late in the day. Very hot, 95, only 75 for the low in the morning. Look at those heat indices again. That's why you got a heat advisory up. There's that storm collapsing and pulling away this evening and the showers drying up. There are the storms in our northeastern counties early tomorrow morning. Tomorrow, a few storms are possible in the area. 
We look ahead even into tomorrow night. We may get clipped by storms in our northeast counties. And finally, on Thursday, a round of storms may come through before we dry out by the upcoming weekend. You can see that right here. Friday, we start to dry out with 88. It's a little cooler and less humid Saturday, Sunday, 87, before we heat back to 92 on Monday.